So what if we told you that nourishment is about more than just food? So we thought that we were healthy for decades of our lives, but after changing our mindset around exercise, we feel stronger and healthier today than we ever have before. So we've shared a lot on here about our story, our healing journey, how we went from um, struggling with infertility to having four healthy kids and how we changed Basically, our diet did a 180 from eating processed foods to real whole foods to growing food ourselves and you know feeding the family off of our homestead here. But one area that we haven't really delved into much is exercise, movement, and how that's really been a big part of our story as well. Yeah, so maybe you can relate to us, like our whole growing up years, we had this really standard uh, kind of conventional view of what exercise was and Basically, you kind of have this separate exercise category of your day, right? It's this thing that you, you wake up, you have 30, 45, 60 minutes of exercise that you, you throw in there, and then you have the rest of your day. You check it off the list, and then you go about the rest of your day. And that was what exercise, that for us at least was what exercise was. Yeah, yeah, that's how I always did it. In high school, I was like doing a Stairmaster for 30 minutes a day. And I'm like, <laughs> check that off my list and move on with the day. But that's really what I thought. And I think another thing that I always kind of was just trained to believe was that your weight or whatever the number was on the scale was like the ultimate marker of health. And so if that number, if your your weight is, you know, where you want it to be in whatever certain range, that that meant you were healthy um, when, you know, that's one, one marker, but it certainly doesn't paint the whole picture. And so anyways, that was just the mindset I had going into health and exercise. I was a, a marathon runner in high school or in not high school, college and in my early twenties and Jim was a cyclist and yeah. that was a big part of his world. I was not into the Stairmaster in high school <laughs> at all, but my family growing up was just not like the exercise type family. But later in life with cycling and just, you know, some more active hobbies like that, I did, you know, I had a gym membership and college and beyond and, you know, picked up some just daily exercise habits and things like that, so. Yeah, so then when we kind of started going on this healing journey of starting, look, you know, changing our diet from eating processed foods to um, eating real foods, and at that point, um, we were struggling with infertility, so I realized, like, running marathons at this point in my life is not doing me any favors, um, so I stopped from running to walking and just trying to figure out what's a healthy balance, what should this movement exercise thing look like for us? Like what's, what's a really healthy way to do that? And that is when I discovered the work of um, Katie Bowman. So she goes under the name uh, Nutritious Movement. She's a ton of amazing content out there. Um, but Nutritious Movement. And she, so one thing that she said, I think in one of the, her podcasts that I listened to at one point, she made this statement, a beach ready body is not about how you look in a swimsuit, but a beach ready body is a body that can go out when you see someone drowning, you know, 20 feet out in the water and you can go out and you can swim and you can save that person, that's a beach ready body. And it just like that just forever sticks with me because it just totally changed the way that I view my body and health and, you know, movement and exercise that instead of it being about how I look, the number on the scale or all those things, it's about having a body that's really functional that's able to do all the things that I needed to do throughout the course of my life and to feel good and strong doing them. Yeah, so really what all that added up to for us was kind of this big picture mindset shift of exercise and movement and what that was going to look like in our daily lives. And, you know, as Joelle kind of mentioned, it became less about focusing on like the visual results of all of it, what we looked like, and more about the like practical, hands-on, like productivity related results of what our exercising was helping us accomplish in, in the rest of our life. Um, like what are our physical abilities and what we're able to accomplish in a and given how, yeah, day. How do we feel? And, yeah, like, and how, like, do, how, how do, do our bodies feel when we do those things? Are we able to do them easily, you know? Yeah, totally. And then there was kind of this like big picture element too of like, we, our mindset shift of like, we were envisioning ourselves as like 80, 90 year olds and thinking mm -hmm. like, <laughs> what do we want to be able to do and achieve uh, in our lives then? And 
what what steps are we going to take today because right those two things are related you can't just have a vision of like where you want to be when you're 80 years old and live a sedentary life t today and expect to be there when you're 80 or 90 you know like plucking potatoes out of the ground in your garden you have to kind of make lifestyle choices today that are going to impact where you're at 30 40 50 years from now yeah yeah so what does this look like for us um so yeah, previously in our world, like we were doing the exercise things and we were just kind of living whatever life we wanted to live. Now we, we view movement as a lifestyle. So we, we actually, we, you know, we've had kind of a pendulum swift, but we've gone out of our way to actually create, to make us move essentially. Um, and so, um, so some of those things for us are like, eliminating some of our furniture items, right? So like, yes, while we do still have a couch, um, like we spend most of our time on the floor, actually. Yeah. So it's actually why we're sitting on the floor right now. Yeah, Normally right? we're filming these videos sitting in chairs, <laughs> but we're like, man, if we're doing this video, yeah, we gotta practice we're gonna what we preach. sit on the ground. <laughs> yeah, but really, I mean, like when we do school with our kids, when we read books with our kids, when we, even when Jim and I are just hanging out, we are usually sitting on the floor. Like that's just our go-to because that action of getting up and down is huge and that's movement. Like um, I was re recently looking into the blue zones. So the blue zones are kind of these areas around the world that have been researched um, that have just higher ages, higher lifespans. Um, so the most centenarians or people that live to be 100 plus years old kind of live in some of these specific areas of the world. And when studying, what is it that they do differently, um, specifically related to their movement? They don't exercise, like they're not doing the Stairmaster or the elliptical machine, but they move a lot throughout their day. Um, in some of the parts of the world, they don't have furniture, like they're eating on the floor and they're getting up and down constantly, you know, 30, 40 times a day. A common denominator with all of them is keeping a garden and really the older people um, being the ones to most commonly tend to those gardens. And so you're out there and like Jim said, you're pulling potatoes and you're up and down and squatting and moving your body in different ways. And so just that idea of incorporating movement as part of your lifestyle has really been the biggest shift that we've, we've made in our world. Yeah. And I know even uh, just a big one for you recently has been this idea of rucking which is kind of i don't know it was a new <laughs> word and term for me <laughs> it's, it's kind of a popular term right now but honestly this kind of started for me actually back in 2016 when we had our first child and so um i guess i'm gonna bring it back to katie bowman again but she has really impacted my view of movement in um what that should look like but um one of the concepts that she often talked about was kind of in these you know, in all the generations before us, whenever people wanted to, really, they just had these lifestyles of movement, right? Like they needed to find food, they had to carry the food. And in to do so, they had to carry the children to go get the food. Like there was just this constant lifestyle of, of movement, of carrying children, of carrying foods, of carrying all their belonging to move camp somewhere else, of carrying water. And so it was just this very that was just normal. What people did was they just lifted things and moved. Um, and so, and that's really what rucking is. Um, it's kind of been this popularized term now of, you know, having weighted backpacks and um, almost a mil it's a, actually a military yeah. term um, that is how, you know, a lot of people in the military are actually trained by kind of, by carrying these heavy rucksacks filled with weights and being able to move across large distances. Um, but for me, it started in 2016 after we had our first child and I would just go on these long walks and I did not push her in a stroller. I didn't even have a stroller. I carried her. And so even as she grew and was a year, a year and a half old and weighed, you know, 20 pounds, 25 pounds and just kept growing, I would carry her on these walks. And it was amazing. Like, I felt so good. It was such a good bonding experience for us and it was so good for me physically, just adding not just that, you know, great component of walking, but it also had that weight bearing activity of carrying my daughter. Um, and you know, it's 
she was a squirmy baby. <laughs> so it was like, okay, we're constantly shifting into different positions and carrying her in different ways and doing all these different things. But by doing so, I'm actually, I'm working all these different muscles. I'm just allowing for more movement and more of things that would have really just kind of replicated how our bodies have been just conditioned to be over years that we've just lost really in our current modern day lifestyle. And so now I, unfortunately she's seven and I can't really <laughs> carry her and walk. And we have since had a few more children. So it makes it a little difficult. I do carry our baby and walk as much as I can when the opportunities arise. But now my kind of thing has been more of a standard rucking. So this idea of rucking is carrying like basically a weighted pack on your back. So walking with a weighted pack. So you can buy these specialized rucking backpacks um, with weights in them of whatever weight you want. Or you can get a backpack and you can fill it with jars of tomato sauce, which is what I do. <laughs> and yeah. I go walk um, for like 30 minutes or whatever really I can squeeze in. I, I would love to just keep walking for longer than that, but life is full. And so usually that's what I can squeeze in like in the mornings before our kids get up and I go out and milk the cow. Um, but just That's how the homesteaders ruck. <laughs> tomato sauce in the backpack. Tomato <laughs> sauce in the backpack. But just that idea of adding kind of that weight bearing component and really trying to just replicate the movements that our ancestors would have done, carrying weights, walking, weight bearing activities and those things I've just found to be extremely beneficial for me. And I think one of the biggest kind of telltale signs of like, hey, like this is actually working um, is, you know, I just had our fourth baby last March and really I have gone through all four pregnancies, not to like toot my own horn. This has nothing to do with me, but just like this idea of movement and moving our bodies in all of these ways. Like I've gone through all four pregnancies, basically being completely pain free. Like all the things that I hear lots of people complain about with back pain and pelvic pain and all these different pains that, that pregnancy can bring on. I just, I never experienced really any of those. I felt great, really, all four of my pregnancies without any of these unwanted pains. And so I think that's just kind of the benefits of having this very movement-based lifestyle where you're constantly moving in different positions and, you know, just putting different pressures on the body to move in different ways. It just results in kind of this you just feel good. Feel good. And it's like that multiple outcome component, like you're stacking so many outcomes and functions with all of it. Like you mentioned, you know, carrying our daughter in your arms, like you're bonding together, you're getting her outside, mm -hmm. you're getting outside time in nature to kind of unwind and versus like, you know, the stair climber, like, you know, <laughs> you're just going at it. Like <laughs> there's, there's not really like, well, a, you're like zoned out there's, there's one, there's one out, a singular outcome there versus, mm -hmm. you know, going around and rucking around our property. You know, you're able to kind of keep an eye on things and check on animals and mm -hmm. just observe Right, like I see on. when the grapes are ripening, so I know like, okay, I need to go harvest those and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know a big one for you, Jim, has been incorporating stretching into your world. Oh, geez, you're not going to make me <sighs> show myself stretching. <laughs> no one needs to see that. Um, yes, but yeah, so every morning I get up and the first thing I do is I have this like, just it's just like a 10 minute stretching routine that I do and there's nothing special about it. Um, so I, I started this when I was actually for a couple of years, actually, I was experiencing some pretty significant back pain, lower back pain. And, um, uh, Joel's sister is a chiropractor and I went to see her and she, um, just kind of recommended some different stretches and, you know, just ways I can kind of move and bend my body to kind of relieve some pressure back there. And so I started that and then I just started incorporating some other stretches too from like playing volleyball and cycling and th things that sports I've done in the past. And I just have this like 10 minute stretch routine. And like, I feel so good just from that of, you know, like anytime if, if I just have to go out and spend an hour or two weeding in the garden and bending down and squatting, like I, just, I feel ready to go for those sorts of activities now. Whereas before, like those felt like I, I don't know, like I was straining my body in new ways that it wasn't used to or accustomed to, but like I incorporate some squats and different activities in the morning. So it just, it just feels natural when I have, 
yeah, different things to do around the homestead here. And, you know, kind of, I don't go out and ruck with a backpack, um, <laughs> rucksack or, or whatever, but like I, you know, sling a 50 pound bag of chicken feed over my shoulder every couple days and carry it from the garage to our barn for the chickens or like when I'm spending, you know, half a day moving fencing out in our back field once a week. Um, you know, like I'm covering lo lots of ground back there and moving these sections of pretty heavy fencing. And, you know, those are just some, ac some examples of similar type activities where you just kind of, instead of, yeah, like we said before, having that separate category of exercise, it's just incorporated throughout our day. Yeah, so really one of the, the big things that this has caused for us is to just think about how can we create opportunities for movement throughout our day? And so just some of the little things that we have done are like when, you know, Jim still and both of us really like we blog, we're on the computer a decent amount. Like we have to sit to do that. But instead of having these really comfy padded chairs, like we have a stool and it's not very comfortable. It's constantly causing us to shift and move or we take it away and we stand and work. Um, and so it's just this constant, even while we're kind of doing these sedentary sort of activities of working, we're figuring out how can we incorporate movement into those activities by sitting in an uncomfortable chair, or you could do like a bow suit, like a big ball, or you could get a standing desk. Even when I was at an, an office job um, for a couple years before we had kids, I specifically asked them, can I have a standing desk? And they got it for me. And then everyone else in the office started getting standing desks too. And so we were all standing and working as opposed to just sitting in our lounge chairs for eight hours a day. And that was awesome. Um, or like, you know, we have a mechanical hand grinding thing. So instead of buying a bag of flour, we hand mill all of our flour, which can be a, a pain sometimes, but like, it's a good workout. Like oh, yeah. I feel good after I do that. And so it's just in figuring out how to maybe just eliminate some of those comforts and kind of things that are just naturally done for us and figure out how can we incorporate movement into the things that we're already doing. Yeah, so don't get us wrong here. We are not trying to demonize exercise in any way or try and say that like that's a thing you need to cut out of your life if, if you're, you know, going to the gym or something like that. Now, that's not what we're trying to say. And, and too, like we're not trying to say like the only lifestyle to live is, you know, on a farm uh, you know, tending your goats or something like that. <laughs> uh, there's lots of other ways to live out there. Um, but it's more so just to think through your day now and like how can you in incorporate movement and just natural forms of exercise into your day to day uh, that, that maybe you're not thinking of right now. And so we gave some of those examples of like carrying your groceries around instead of pushing a shopping cart or walking or biking, you know, to the grocery store or to your work even or something like that that's gonna there's this viral video out there of this, this like you know a bunch of people going to the gym and it's in the upstairs of somewhere and everyone is taking the escalator to get to the gym <laughs> yeah. and so like our encouragement is be the person who takes the stairs <laughs> yeah totally like and that's what you know coming back to like the comfort crisis and there's so many modern day conveniences in our world like I think really, you know, moving and being healthy in today's world takes some intentionality of choosing yeah. to say no to those things and, and not just taking the, the convenient path every single time. Like sometimes it's fine, like we, we drive places and we do normal things like that, but when we can, we'll, we'll try and like walk somewhere or yeah, ride our bike. ride our bike or get, you know, natural forms of exercises in our day. Yeah, so that's really our overall encouragement for you is to, to go out, find ways to incorporate natural movement into your everyday. And that's really what's made the, the biggest impact for us when we stopped, you know, switched from viewing it as the segmented 30 minutes a day type thing to the, the exercise and movement. It's just part of our day. It's part of our lifestyle. So thanks for being here and we'll see you next time.